Okay, this episode started off shocking. So yeah, I'm just guessing that Chiaki knows that that's Hajime, clearly. I guess because even, you know, even though he's still Izuru Kamakura, he still has Hajime's face on him, so... First thing she noticed that his hair was different. Alright, so I'm guessing that Junko's starting to plot her little plan on Chiaki, because she walks up to Chiaki and she starts going on, on about... I don't know, she just says something, and then she says about, then she talks about how Chiaki is this representative of her class. Maybe she's playing something else for Chiaki because she didn't die with the, uh, with the class reps from the, the tragedy, I guess you should call it now. Oh, and, uh, Junko made, didn't want her sprites, uh, didn't want her sprites again. She did the cute, adorable one. And then Chisa came out of nowhere and threw a fire extinguisher at Junko. That's amazing. So Chisa saw Izu Kamakura and she had a weird reaction in her eyes. I'm guessing she can also see that that's Hajime as well. After the opening, which I feel something has changed. Anyways, uh, we go to we go back to Chisa and Junko and Izuru. Uh, Chiaki and almost dead Komeda is not here anymore. Junko introduces herself and calls herself and you know calls herself Junko Enoshima, super high school level despair. And she also introduces Izuru Kamakura. And of course, Chisa already is familiar with Izuru Kamakura's name. Junko mentions at some point that this is the last day that Chisa and the entire her class, Chisa's class, the 77th class that we know, it will be the last day they remain themselves. Speaking of the 77th class, we see them and they're talking about how Komeda was a bunch of bullcrap telling them that he's seen Sumiki. And then Chi not Chiaki and Komeda come inside the room. Well, unconscious Komeda at this. Chiaki comes in and yells and yells at uh, that Chisa is in trouble. We go back to Junko and she's talking about how the entire class's hope is going to cost them their lives and the hope of their class will be turned into despair. I don't get that. How is she going to how is she going to make this entire class turn over to her side? Either the video that uh that she I'm guessing she made uh Ry Ryota make or they're going to or they're going to have Chiaki get killed and everyone's going to get sad and stuff and turn into despair and Junko's going to be like, "Oh, let me help you" and stuff like that. I don't know. Probably one of those, probably not. We'll just see. We go back to the 7th class again. And we see that down they now that they know they're actually getting ready for battle to like fight Junko. I'm guessing. We go back to Junko for a brief moment, but that doesn't matter. We go back to the seventh seventh class, and Mikan and Peko walk in the room with Peko actually unconscious. I'm guessing she got beaten by Mukuro. Peko wakes up and she tells Fuyuhiko to run. Going back to Junko, she mentions how everyone's going to become ulti ultimate despairs and how she's going to do that through brainwashing. Junko actually shows an example of that. I'm guess and some, I'm guessing, a reserve course student comes out of the shadows, and he starts sawing his neck. From what it looked like, though, he didn't want to do that. I'm guessing through some type of weird brainwashing, he's. He's not brainwashed, but his body is. So, Junko mentions that uh, the entire 77th class is going to be worse than this guy right here who's killing himself. And she explains everything we already heard in the last class trial of Danganronpa 2. How to destroy their bodies, kill people close to them, and whatnot. We go back to the 77th class and they mention, yeah, we're about to do this. I'm going to, and they have their own little operation name. I forgot the name. But then Komeda wakes up and says that they don't even have a chance. Talking about how Junko and Izuru is despair, it's off the charts. There's no way we can even... I mean, at some point he didn't mention that we have good talents. She says trying to take them on would only lead to suicide. But then Peko also agrees with Komeda after he stops talking. Komeda actually at some point convinced the class that, you know, they shouldn't do it. They just don't do it. But then Chiaki... She actually tries to convince the class that, you know, we shouldn't do this. Chis is in trouble. And then Chiaki starts talking about all the good times we had with Chisa. How she's too good of a person to lose. 
Okay, he paused everything. What? Ultimate imposter. He took off his Ryota mask. Ultimate imposter just did that. Is, is this what he actually looks like? I think this is really ultimate imposter. Why would he just go and show himself like that unless he actually trusted these people? Everyone gets startled and he explains that he's actually the super high school level ultimate imposter and he's just been disguised as Ryota. Then Maharu asks where's the real Ryota? Then he guesses that he must have been captured by uh, Junko. And then Komeda starts talking and he says that he was only playing everyone about how they would lose because he believes in their hope and he says their hope is stronger than thought or something like that. Maybe I'm just saying random stuff right now. Komeda tried standing up saying that he'll go too. But he fell that back down, I'm guessing he's too weak from that gunshot. And then Sonia ordered Soda to piggyback ride um, Komeda. Or to give Komeda a piggyback ride. There we go. After seeing Murakata and Sakakura, I see that they're looking at Junko's files. Which kind of leads me to think that they're on to her. I think, they're, I think they know what she's planning. Or I guess they know what she's up to. I don't know how, but... Yeah, I guess that's it. That, or I'm guessing she seems suspicious to them. So I'm guessing Murakata and Sakakura do know about her. And now Sakakura is off to go find her right now. And then after that, I think they said they were going to interrogate her. And then we see Chisa strapped to a chair. And she's watching uh, the video that Ryota saw. I'm guessing she's being brainwashed right now. We go back to Junko and Muka. We see them and after Junko left... Mukuro pulls out these two sticks and stabs them in Chisa's head and starts messing with her brain, I'm guessing? How in God's name would that work? Jeez, man, this is kind of messed up and horrifying. Ugh, just the image of it. And then from what I guess, we had an image of Murakata, but then as like a picture being burned, he, he was, I guess, out of her memory. I'm guessing her brain is washed now. Go to 7th, 7th class, and as as they're running, they actually come towards the reserve course students, and it seems as though they're all protesting because they all have a bunch of posters about equal rights and give us a chance and stuff like that. And as if it was first instinct, a lot of reserve course students broke their posters, which are made of wood, and used them as spears stakes i'm guessing and they're probably going to kill the reserve course students i mean the main course students my bad so gundam and gundam and uh, nakamaru stay back and they're actually going to fight the reserve course students nakamaru rolls up his sleeves and gundam summons his 12 zodiac generals i think they were called we see ryota and he is running for his life and we see why he's being chased by some reserve course students. And of course, like any person in anything who's running being chased, he falls. And now he and then he gets surrounded by what looks like probably like 50 reserve course students. Exactly how did he get out of this alive? Man, Ryota has gone through some hella trauma. Oh, and uh Junko appeared. That's nice. It's exactly what Ryota needed right now. She says she's come to say goodbye. Strangely enough, she, she said not to kill him, just to say goodbye as a normal person would. And she starts are really making him messed up in the head by talking about the 7th seventh class and how they're going to turn into despair and how they're going to be nothing but people who want the world to be in despair. And Juko just told him to run. She didn't send any, sub any reserve course students after him. She, she just told him to run and he just ran away. But then a third player arrives, Sakakura. I'm guessing we get to finally see that scene we saw from I think the last episode or the episode before that in Future Arc where we've seen him like in like a small crater in the ground and Junko smiling over him. We go back to Ryota and he's running through some leaves until he runs over a cliff and falls into I'm guessing the ocean or a really big river. And as he's falling, he starts thinking about how he didn't mean his anime to be meant for this and he just wanted his anime to make the world a better place. Okay, so Ryota actually washed the shore. He came from a rushing river. Wow, he's been through hell and back. 
So, we go back to Sakakura, and he notices how all the Reserve Corps students around Junko are actually brainwashed, or he, he just kind of says that they're not normal. So I'm just gonna guess that they're all brainwashed, and they're not the only ones. Sakakura takes off the jacket, and puts his hands up, and he's ready to fight. Then we go back to the founder Izu Kamakura statue, and we go back down the stairs, and we see that the, the entire 7-7 class, well not the entire, because Nakamaru and Gundam went off the fight, but they're going down the stairs where Chisa and Mukuro was. As they're going down the stairs, they start talking about how they're all supportive of each other. We see that they're really supportive of each other, how they're talking about Nakamaru and Gundam are uh, doing good and they they have no, they shouldn't have any problems, and they're all giving each other good support, get, getting, each other, getting each other's hopes up. But then a thought came to my mind as they were walking down the steps. What if Mikan is against them? It's just a thought, but what if... Never mind. Okay, speaking of Mikan... Huh, crazy I had the thought. Mikan takes Chiaki off this side because she wants to tell her something, apparently. Mikan starts talking about how Chiaki is like listless and quiet. But then all of a sudden she's like the center of attention. And at that, the leader of the class being the class representative. Then Mikan pushes Chiaki into a trap door? So, the wild guess I made before I even seen Mikan do that, I was right? She is evil or still kinda evil in despair working for Junko? Chiaki wakes up and Chisa is there? Chisa says that the long haired boy, which I'm guessing is Izu Kamakura, let her go. Wait, so one, how did she find this trap room? If it even is one. Hmm. Chisa now seems suspicious. And then Chisa helps Chiaki up, looks at her face, and makes a very weird smile I'm not too sure about. I mean, adding on to that comment that we see the name of the episode, which is Chisa Yukizome doesn't smile, that makes Chisa even more suspicious now. Whatever Mukuro did, I think Chisa's an ultimate despair, but she's just playing it off right now until some type of big reveal. But question, if all this is happening, why didn't Danganronpa Zero happen yet? We didn't see a glimpse of nothing Danganronpa Zero related. We seen, we seen Matsuda last episode, like a glimpse of him. Now we have nothing out of anything Danganronpa Zero related. We've only seen technically only two things they were up a zero related, and that was that one time we saw Yuta in the background, the ultimate spy. Yeah, the ultimate spy, that's what he was. Super high school level spy or something like that. We we seen him walk by he walked in the back he we've seen him in the background when we saw uh, Ultimate Imposter. And now then we seen Matsuda. But then after that, there was nothing. And I'm thinking Dangrupa Despair arc is going to end at probably episode 12? And I'm pretty sure that's not enough time to tell, you know, all the important parts of what happened in Dangrupa Zero. No post-episode footage, apparently. So that's it for this episode. I'll see you all in the next one. See you then.